Hey, you're listening to Rogan Radio, and hey. it is a... Hey, Rogan Radio listen, we are, we are, Hello. We are back in... Uh, Thank you for listening. Yes. We're back in Daylight Saving Time. We are here. And uh, are tonight, you? listen, we have uh, all kinds of crazy <laughs> things happening this week. We not only have... Crazy. Uh, today was the first day for Daylight Saving Time. Daylight so have you, uh, saving Did you guys adjust time. okay? No, man. I lost adjust. an hour of sleep, and I'm still tired. Now, can we get on with this shit, please? Yeah, Come on, man. man. Let me tell you God something. bless America. Uh, the uh, the biological clock that we all yes. have. You know, I woke up at 4 the o'clock clock. thinking it was 5 o'clock. I mean, <laughs> even if it was 5 o'clock. No, you woke up at 5 o'clock thinking it was 4 o'clock. We lost an hour. Some clock. So if it was four, it was really Get five. Off hour, I, I, I I'm not a scientist. An hour of sleep. I'm not a scientist. Hey, you know uh, what? Listen real quick. There's like uh, 12 states on board already. They're thinking about changing the daylight. They're thinking about doing away with daylight savings time. Well, I'm glad you actually brought that up because that's that's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. And that's my story is well, that we're going to talk about and daylight I'm saving time. It. Um, is that, you know, where did it come from? Why did it start? What's the whole deal with daylight saving time? We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight in this podcast. I'll give um, you my theory on that. Go ahead. Go it, ahead please. It, 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 it kind of messes with you a little bit. Not only do you have to go and, and get your body situated to the entire process of, you know, waking up earlier, uh, but at the same time, you have to go and you have to set like 13 clocks in the car, <laughs> the, the car clocks and yeah. the, well, the thank house God clocks. Your, thank God your cell phones, they, all, uh, they do all that on like, yeah. Do it at 2 a.m. exactly. My father-in-law told him one time in the truck, I said, you need to change your truck because daylight saving time. is said, that's right, boy. I said, it'd be right half of the year. It's right. And half the year, it ain't. Don't worry about it. I want to give a, uh, a big special applause out to uh, the big winner tonight. Uh, first of all, the other winners we had, the, uh, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Woo! Month. March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and this month uh, we are highlighting that, which we should do every single podcast because it's one of those things that affects us all. Uh, David Daughtery, he's going to have a concert up at Sagebrush coming up on the 19th of March. At the, it's in Fairmont, mm -hmm. and it's, it's going to be uh, for Colon Cancer Awareness, but all the, all, all, you know, the proceeds from a song that he uh, uh, has sung an Elvis song, Walk a Mile in My Shoes. All those proceeds go to colon cancer research. Or not, not, I don't want to say colon cancer research, cancer research in general. Not just colon cancer? Right. Okay. And yes. uh, his, his, his wife, Chrissy, and uh, we have a lot of people. You know, you know. first of all, Chrissy, Robbie Faber, he's been, like I said, we, you hear the name Robbie Faber a lot. <laughs> yeah. And he's been a real bitch with it. And, uh, and that's fantastic. You just cannot give up. You have to keep a positive attitude. However, uh, we've had a couple winners over the past few weeks. Uh, Mike Birdwing being one, Mike Bird, and then uh, George Reinhardt. George won as well. And then the big winner tonight with the uh, had actually dinner tickets because he listened to the podcast and he got the um, mystery Char word right. Charles Charlie, Sawyer. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie is a fantastic dude. He is funny as hell. I man. really like Charlie. You know, I only met Charlie one time, but you know what? I could sit down and have a beer with Charlie. Absolutely, he'd be fun, fella. Charlie's a cool dude, and he's going like to be Charlie. going to hey, uh, to the Sagebrush to watch Charlie. David and have a dinner. Uh, courtesy of David D and the band, and that's fan freaking tastic. It is. Uh, St. Patrick's Day also coming up. Was St. Patrick even Irish? Hey, I don't know. You would think so, right? Well, tell me if he was or not. I yeah, don't I don't know about St. Patrick is not. He was not Irish. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Uh, Todd, you have uh, some very interesting things concerning maybe JFK, man. JFK. Listen, if you don't know anything, of, I know you do. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, I don't know how deep you've delved into the whole JFK, but this is crazy yeah. stuff. No, Some no. of the stuff I learned on JFK will blow your mind. You're like, wow, and it will really make it's, you think. It's actually kind of scary to think. Yeah, to it be is. Quite honest with I know, it, absolutely. The, 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 the most bizarre thing about JFK that I think of is I think, okay, history has proven this guy or has portrayed this guy as being one of the greatest people on the planet ever. Absolutely. As far as the United States goes. Yeah. He was 46. Pretty that's, young. That's, pretty young for well, a Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's our age. No and we're sitting here in my house doing a podcast, mm -hmm. and that guy was president of the United States. Mm -hmm. I think we were really falling short. We really dropped the ball. We could have done a lot more with our miserable, disgusting, stupid lives. Have you had a, any problem with the weather changing? With nope. the weather, you know, we like mm -hmm. I said, we were we were talking about uh, the biological clocks, but like uh, you don't do you guys have issues with uh, sinuses? Yeah, when sinuses. They, and... No, not really. You know, here's what I know. My kids do ears plugging. Oh, oh my goodness, and my get headaches. Has, Wake uh, up in the middle of the night with headaches. Yeah, she's got stuff like that. Listen, one thing that I love more than the headaches, my, you know, you have Punxsutawney Phil, and Punxsutawney Phil will tell you exactly what the weather's not going to be if, as far as an early spring. <laughs> he should be sure up, or, scanning, or, killed, or whatever, neat. right? Uh, but one thing I'm really looking forward to is I do for the last since the uh, pear tree fell down are ants. 
Oh, you have problems with ants. Oh, Every year you have God. problems with I don't with know ants. where I don't know where the ants came from. I never used to I never had a problem well, with ants. And then cut, when, didn't when you that, cut a tree down? That, or something? that pear tree got yeah. hit by lightning and that pear tree fell down. And yep. ever since that pear tree fell down. They said we need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Did you see Let's that? Go did, to Chuck's house. Have you by chance seen the video on uh, I don't know if it was on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, where the guy put in uh, he put like lead, like like I don't know if it was lead or aluminum, something like a, like a molten steel down the hole oh, yeah, of an yeah, 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 and made yeah. a sculpture with it. And pulled a sculpture out, cool. and it showed the actual colony and all the tunnels and stuff, yeah. that how big actually oh, an ant colony be, is. Yeah, it's fantastic. It was aluminum. Yeah, he melted aluminum. It's amazing. Uh, you know, once again, I want to say thanks for, uh, or, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, say hi to Dan Courtney, uh, Tommy Morgan, Diamond. Diamond's a big new listener Diamond. of the show. Give me your give me your boss what you would uh, Oh, up. hey, Diamond. <laughs> My name is Diamond. Mm. Swinging on a pole. Swinging on a pole. Look at Dollar me. Bills swinging pants, on a pole. Because that's how I make some buku <laughs> money. <laughs> Hello, Diamond. You think uh, that's a real name? Chucky. No, absolutely not. Sure it is. No, it's not a real name. That is her stage probably a name. nickname. Uh, one thing, one one people uh, we we talk about KDS all the time, and KDS they have made the shirts for us, and we have some uh, new decals coming out from KDS. But uh, once again, we have links and all this stuff. If you want a Rogan Radio T-shirt, and coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to be giving away one hundred dollars and an Amazon Fire tablet. The only way you're going to be able to even begin to win something like that is if you have a Rogan Radio T. T-shirt. Sorry about that. Um, that's just how it goes. Uh-huh. Membership has its privileges, I guess. It does. And the only, you know, one of the places, uh, the only place you can get that is KDS Primitive Science and More. And so we're going to put a link for that. You get, need to get in uh, contact with Steve. He'll uh, set you up. He'll tell you all about how, how to get your how to Rogan get your shirt. Radio t-shirt. And take your picture with your Rogan Radio T-shirt. We've had people do that already. Well, now, now here's the thing that we haven't talked about uh, a business, Clarksburg Blueprint. They they are the ones that when you watch us on the uh, the YouTube, which is what you're watching uh, maybe right now, is that we have a big banner behind us, a big radio uh, Rogan Radio banner, and that thing was made by Clarksburg Blueprint over at 302 Duff Street in Clarksburg. And we want to say hi to them or big thank you for them. Um, we we've had some uh, people have asked me, you know, I don't, I, there's a lot of people doing. This now we're kind of branching out. We're helping everybody that that, that needs help, and uh, you know, like the uh, Mad No Matter. We got. Uh, are we going to talk about the Mad No Matter because the, the Mad no did matter. the Mad No Matter like because like the Mad Hatter. But you like, know what? He's like the Moan. The Moan. What? How do you say it? It's kind of like Moan. Now, what do you say it? The Mad the, What? The, the Mad No yeah. Matter. Like a No mo- Matter. Like, like yeah. Because no he's because he likes to travel. Yeah. He, he's going all over the place. And uh, so we mad. we've been getting some questions about he's things. Mad. And and one of the, uh, the, no the, the couldn't get any better than this big banner behind us. And uh, I want to thank uh, Clarksburg Blueprint for that. They did a fantastic job. Uh, once again, tonight, what we're going to talk about on this podcast is going to be extremely interesting. We're going to talk about uh, St. Patrick's Day. We're going to talk about daylight Aye. savings time. You know, you, you might think that's going to be non-existent to your mind. You might not think it's going to be very interesting, but you will walk away and think, Dan, that's pretty absolutely interesting. Why, ha- why didn't they teach me this in school? Why not? And uh, we're also going to be talking about JFK. JFK. And then Jimmy is going to – he's going to – to bring up the bottom of the uh, lineup with yeah, I got a, a mystery noise story. A mystery, mystery noise, noise story. story. As many of you may know, if you've seen Chuck's video Ooh. in the mystery noise in Lumberport, yeah. oh, it's a, it was it was a funny video. We always laugh. I know Steph always right. laughs at that video because it's just funny. Well, right. it happens in another place. There's another place with a mystery noise. The yeah. same noise. Yeah, that thing gets around. Noise. That noise gets around. It's bizarre. Can they see that on Rogan Radio? Can What's they see it, it on your Rogan Radio? Uh, you know what? We'll that be, video? I'll try to find that thing. Put I'll that thing up. We'll put it up there. Uh, once again, you can text us or email us at any time at 681-222-ROGN. We're going to have a mystery word throughout this podcast. This podcast uh, mystery word will win you a decal uh, to put on your car. Or put it on your toolbox, or wherever you put it on your wall, or put whatever you do, whatever you want to, put it on your ass, put it on your ass, put it on your ass, slap. You can slap and it on my ass. Then pull your pants down. Let me see your ass. Listen, oh, you can, listen, you can just go down and see, talk to Diamond, and put it on her ass. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it'll cost sure. you right there. It'll buddy. be a tramp stamp. That'll cost. Not you saying money. that Diamond's a tramp stamp. Whoa. I don't want to, I don't no. want to get in trouble with that. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Do you think Diamond listens to this crap? Diamond will knock me straight. Diamond will knock me straight in the mouth if she ever heard something. Well, it's because Diamond's a man. <laughs> oh my God! You no, know what? Diamond's that just took all the heat off of me, dude. No, I'm sorry, Diamond. Wow, Diamond needs 
She, yeah, she I mean, went, you're a respectable woman. Yeah, Diamond needs to uh, listen, call I love, in. Listen, let me tell you something. I love Diamond. I and do you know too. what? Listen. And, <laughs> Who doesn't love Diamond? I love her now. I'm sorry, yeah. Diamond. Wow. I'm sorry. What's the number Diamond good, can it's call? A good, it's a good thing we didn't use Diamond's real name or she. Listen, we're gonna we're gonna pay for this. Shit. Well, we don't That's know Diamond's real name. <laughs> oh, absolutely, oh, we do. Yeah. Maybe we do? you don't. You do? Yeah. No, you do too. Okay. Dude. As soon as you hit pause, I want to know. Yeah, Diamond's you're gonna right. find out Diamond's right. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, and once again, you can check us out on the uh, and spread the word. Tell somebody. You listen. We're on iTunes. We're on uh, Rogan uh, Rogan Radio. We're on. <laughs> oh, we are. Uh, on hey, we're on Rogan Radio. Radio too, we're on guys. Stitcher. We're on the. Uh, we're on the. Google. Google, YouTube, Google, Google Plus, and Twitter. Everywhere. You, all you have to do just is everywhere. You, just, you can even go to Google and search Rogan Radio, and you're going to find something with Rogan Radio. Did you get us on iTunes yet, there, Sugar? iTunes has been uh, from the very oh, no, beginning. No, 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 no. Uh, tune in. Tune in Radio is still a wash. Okay, well, uh, but we are on uh, Google Play. You can you can go to your Google Play thing and and find the Rogan Radio We're podcast everywhere. there. It's absolutely free, as you know. If you're listening, tell your friends, tell your family, tell all your kids. Don't tell your kids because you, no, you, might, you don't, don't tell your fast. kids because if you listen to the live, you'll you'll hear all the bleached butthole stuff and everything. Oh else. my yeah. goodness! <laughs> hey, you're listening to Rogan Radio. Hey, you're listening to Rogan Radio. I'll tell you what it is absolutely St. Patrick's Day, and we're <laughs> almost St. Patrick's Day anyhow. And here's some things you know. There's a lot of people in 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 the United States. That are Irish or have some Irish descent. You are Irish. I am one of those. Do you have any Irish ancestry? I uh, no. Maybe I everybody's got so. a little bit of Irish in them. Don't you think everybody's got a little American Indian and Irish? When are you, you th- Irish? When you think of it'd definitely be a little. Uh, <laughs> I get a little. Yeah. <laughs> when you think of St. Patrick's Day, what do you think of? What's think the of, first thing of? I think of green. I think of shamrocks. I think of leprechauns. Shamrocks. I think of pinching. I think of corned beef hash. I think of... Uh, you think of probably... Let me guess. You, one of the bigger things is the big St. Patrick's Day parade in New York City. <laughs> do you I don't, don't think I, that? I absolutely do not think of that. Okay, well, no. every, and right, 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 right in front of, right in front of St. Pat. Well, it's because you're not Irish, probably. But it's you know St. Patrick's Day Cathedral in New York City, right across from big, Rockefeller Center. Big, big, big building. The first St. Patrick's Day parade in the world was in New York City, if you can believe that, and that was held in 1760. So God bless the New York Irish. I got so it. No, no, Irish need applause. Applause. So only the Americans applause. celebrate the Irish, but the Irish probably don't even the Irish the doesn't. Irish. The Irish really don't give two shits. They really. need to have a St. Americans Day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, now, uh, something else that's pretty interesting, one of the other things is that you think of Chicago, perhaps. Nope. What's about... Oh, absolutely. Chicago, Chicago and Irish. How does the Chicago and Irish the king? Well, of you Chicago. know, you see the uh, the 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 rivers. Oh yeah, the rivers and Irish is exactly that's exactly what I think about when I think of Irish. Do you is not, the do you, river? Well, because you're American. Do you, do you, uh, yeah. have, you, have you never seen like the the, uh, the the rivers going through Chicago? No, no. That are no. that are negative like green. <laughs> they got green Negative. rivers because there's a lot of industrial pollution being there's pumped of, into yeah, those rivers. Exactly. Well, we need to have the mad no matter. Well, anyway, yeah, Plumbers Local no 110. We need to have him go take a trip to record those. The, 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 if, you, if, if you don't know that, well, in Chicago, what they do is they dye the rivers that are going through Chicago green. With for what? Like dye. food coloring? Well, that, gallons of what, food what, what, what color goes with brown to make green? <laughs> well, Yellow. <laughs> it's a it's it's a dye. And Plumbers Local One Ten, they are the ones that do that. And the in the dye that lasts in the river is a uh, lasts about uh, five hours long, something like that. So they really put something in the river they to have, make it. You green. have never seen that? Are you yeah. kidding? No, really? I would think that would kill all oh the. Oh my goodness! Well, I guess they're not fish there. I think There's that would kill all there. the. Uh, Whatever's in that river. There's nothing in that Once river. Once again, what we're listening to, but, but uh, under this is Leroy Anderson was an American composer. He made this thing called the Irish Suite, and it's a it's a sweet ass song, is all I can tell you. So we're just going to listen to it as we're talking about this. Now, once again, uh, unless you're Irish, Irish, you're you probably Irish. don't know this. I'm not Irish, but I'm the, Irish. The, I, I guess the the leader or the prime minister of Ireland gives the president of the United States a big, like, vase or a boss, a big crystal bowl full of shamrocks. All right. What okay. the hell is a shamrock? Is that what? like a shamrock? Clover? I think you have a shamrock. So you can go out in his yard and pick them. 
Yeah. Well, it's just is it's that clover? Little, it, it's like it's clover, more or less. So he gives him a big ball of clover. He gives him a big ball clover because that's what the, the, the you know the Trinity man. When you're talking about St. Patrick's Day, the, that's why they use. That's why. Oh, I can't talk about that. But <laughs> you can. That's okay. The Trinity is but, but, uh, but Irish. You, that's how. That's how. How in Ireland they taught. Mm. The locals about Catholicism and Christianity is that the Catholicism the, or Catholicism. <laughs> Listen, man, don't Listen, man. This <laughs> broadcast being brought to you by Miller High Life, the champagne um, of beers. I think you've been bringing too many champagne. But of beers. but it's it's the uh, it's about the Trinity, the, you know, of all the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's Hallelujah. absolutely right, and there, it was easy to learn that way. Anyhow, uh, it's tradition. That the prime minister slash whatever leader, I guess we're going to call him the uh, we're going to call him the prime minister in Ireland, give the president of the United States a big crystal bowl full of shamrocks. Well, yeah. what happens to that? He gives it to the president, and no sooner after he does that, guess what happens? He uh, the Secret Service takes it away it. and smash it and throws it away. Well, <laughs> <Man>, probably <laughs> after they the wave clovers, a wand over it and go it's, open it. And there's no bomb smell it. it. Now here's some here's some interesting things. We're going to get into some very interesting facts very quickly about St. Patrick's Day because St. Patrick's Day mostly is an American holiday. Um, St. Patrick was St. Patrick to uh, to Irish to Ireland, right? However, however, what however. we know as St. Patrick is not really necessarily as history pertains him as much as the immigrants coming over from Ireland during the potato, potato famine. And when they landed in New York and spread out, that's how our family got here. You're They're, saying ours and your. Mine came over. My, well, mine were German. Well, that's because they were trying to. We like uh, sauerkraut. That's because they were trying to hide from prosecution from the uh, Herrenberg trials or whatever that was. Don't try to. <laughs> don't confuse me, dude. <laughs> anyway, St. Hey. Patrick, St. Patrick himself was not even Irish. Huh. If you can believe that, St. Patrick. No, I believe it. His, he was actually born in Wales. He was actually a Roman citizen. Uh, 350 A.D., if you can believe that. Wow. Now, that's a long time ago. <clears throat> yeah. Something else. He was a slave. He was also a slave. He was 16 years old. The guy was slave. He was kidnapped and sold into slavery in Ireland. Oh. He tended sheep for 10 years. He was a sheep herder then, really. So where does drinking all the beer come from? Well, yeah. it's funny you also say that because originally, traditionally, that St. Patrick's Day is a dry day. You don't drink on St. Patrick's Irish Day. Irish don't leave not it to the Americans. Drink. We're like, well, let's drink on that day then. <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> the Irish do not have that in their vocabulary. We will not drink if not in the Irish vocabulary. <laughs> it was a, it was a Catholic holiday. It wasn't necessarily a national holiday in Ireland. So, in when you're in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day, because you know you don't you know how do you, how do you want to say it? But since you're Catholicism. I can't yeah, that's say That's right it now. Um, that, <laughs> that you don't drink. Must I mean, be all that high life. <laughs> Catholicism. The, the champagne of Catholicism. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? I don't know. However, it, it was originally a dry day. <laughs> um, another thing that, 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 that's kind of bizarre about the whole thing is everybody associates St. Patrick's Day with being green. Yeah. Yeah. There's, well, shamrocks well, are green, I, right? I so. Is that where it came from? I think just because Ireland itself is very green because it's rainy all the time. Green. Yeah. I don't know. It's actually blue. Originally, it was blue. The grass blue is was used to represent Ireland on flags, coat of arms, and sports jerseys. They changed that in the 17th century, actually. They had sports jerseys in the right? 17th century. Hey, man, listen, what were they playing? Probably football. 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 We call that we football. call that soccer in America. Yeah. So this is just it's kind of funny that Saint Patrick himself he died. The reason it's on March seventeenth is that's the day he died. Hmm. So then that's how it came about. The people from Ireland during the potato famine came to uh, the United States. They wanted to have some of their heritage, and then wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That's how all this kind of stuff started for marketing, kind of like Sears did with. Um, with the Long Rudolph North? the Red Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer Sears, that, Sears and Roebuck. Sears? I thought that was Montgomery Ward's. They came up Maybe. with Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I thought that was Montgomery Ward's. Was what? it Sears? They came up with Rudolph. Yeah. No, Rudolph Santa Claus came up with it. No, absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, it's Santa Claus. But anyway, now now something he found Rudolph. Now something's very interesting too. When it comes to America and St. Patrick's Day. One of the big things you'll see at, at quote unquote these shithole supposedly Irish pub bar places, yeah, is when you come in and you can have your corned yeah. beef and cabbage. Let me guess. Yeah. Let me guess. What else? Let me well, guess. Well, that's what else? not really Irish, though. You no, know what I mean? The whole establishment of 
corned beef and cabbage. It's, that's just that's something that, uh, I, just like you said, Americans made up. It's another thing that Americans made up. It's truly not the uh, the dish that they eat at all. Well, I don't think that uh, <clears throat> beef or meat was really prevalent. Or prevalent. No, no, they we, didn't have a lot of meat in no, because uh, Ireland. They, actually, they ate a lot of... Uh, Bacon, like you know, they had pork, oh, yeah. pork. yeah, so, and bacon was their big was their big thing. But um, I love bacon. You know, I guess when they came here, there wasn't they didn't have the bacon that they were readily available that they liked. You know, right? I mean? Well, probably so also the, the being the closest thing was that corned beef is the closest texture, and, and, and from probably the juice. And, well, exactly, probably because they came to New York. That's where Ellis Island and everything yeah, else were. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was like okay, all these the Irish are flooding New York. That's why you had no Irish need to apply, and you had all these Irish people there. And then, you know, by that time, you had your Jewish population there. Maybe yeah. so. That's kind, of, that's kind of weird how that, I, that's turned out. You like corned beef? I've ne- you know you what? Know, I don't you know if I've corned beef. beef? You know, oh, I love corned beef. Now, the only, no, I don't understand really even necessarily what corned beef is. Well, you take a beef, and it eats a lot of corn. <laughs> corned beef. I think it has to do with more of the salt, doesn't it? it I, I don't know, but I love corned yeah. beef, bro. Love it. Like it mixed up with potatoes or something? Yeah. yeah that's good. Like God, la, 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 la. Maybe, I'm, uh, maybe I'm more Irish. Corn than beef and hash. Anyway, one of the things, uh, what's uh, your, you have your lucky you have your lucky clover. That's a four-leaf clover. Uh-huh. This will be the last thing we talk about. A.K.A. St. Patrick's. Yeah. Shamrock. What's the chances? Because anybody and their brother, like Jimmy Shit said. Jimmy Shit's what? <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Shit's Shit shamrock. Somebody smell over that way? <laughs> There's Jimmy, a shamrock. Jimmy could go out there There's in the yard shamrock. right now because I purposely plant a – now, Todd hates clovers because they bloom and they have the bees and stuff like that. Jimmy – or uh, Todd hates hey, that stuff. we get low on bees, dude. We need them. I, I absolutely. You're right. But I don't like them in my yard, them little white flowers. I mow them down, baby. But I, I purposely planted clover for the nitrogen that they bring into the soil and they bring life, mm, right? That's true. So you see a lot of clover and stuff it's like true. that. But it, like a, like a four-leaf, what are the chances of you going out in your yard – and finding a four-leaf clover. I'd say like one in 700,000. I'd say like one in a million. I've found one before, believe it. Have really? you really? Yeah. Did you pick it? I'm in Pittsburgh when I lived Did there. you pick it? Damn straight yeah. I picked it. Did you put it like in a... I was young. Where I was a now? kid. I was like, hey, look oh, at this, man. Where is it now? So, I Would you know. throw it away? I threw it away. Probably right. ate it. Poor leaf. That's lucky. Lucky, it's, lucky, it's actually, lucky. It's whatever. actually one in 10,000, so it's not oh, really that, that bad. Is? Yeah. Oh, but I've never seen bad. one. I have never seen one. Now, no, now, my mom's mom, just my one. grandmother, she could go out there and just look at the yard and pick one right out of the yard. And bang! She could find one. Really? Yeah, that's a lie. Abs- that's no, it is absolutely not a lie. Get your mom get on whatever. the phone. Where are they? Get your grandma on the phone. Where are they then? Liar. Yeah, where are your four-leaf clothes? They're in my crystal vase. That's why we have a lot of money, so you can kiss my ass, because we're lucky like that. (laughs) He puts all his four-leaf clovers in his underwear drawer. That's where he keeps the cash. (laughs) Just looking in Chuck's underwear drawer. (laughs) <laughs> not, in, not in his underwear. If you got a four leaf clover so, in your underwear, I'm just look in Chuck's drawers. <laughs> no, <laughs> his <laughs> underwear drawer. Jesus Christ, Jimmy. His underpants <laughs> drawer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus. I didn't mean to Listen, say that. Listen, it's St. Patrick's Day. Now, come on. I don't know how it got to be associated with corned beef and cabbage and drinking and going out and partying in Green Rivers in Chicago but and gay parades in, in New York City, Whoa, but somehow it's got gay. to be that way. The Irish gay. They're happy. That's what that used to mean back Gaily. in the day. They're gay. Gaelic. They're gaily. Anyway, you're listening to Rogan Radio. Once again, go ahead and give us a text at 681-222-ROGN. As always, Boom. we have a uh, great time. We have the uh, mystery word coming up. We have the quote of the day coming up. We also have this neat little discussion about JFK. That you know, Todd yeah, very interesting. You were bringing what? up the mystery word. It reminded me of this mystery noise thing we were talking about. See, so tell us the about mystery it. noise. Do you want to talk about it now? You want to yeah, wait? Yeah, well, it's, it's quick. Hey, you know, I know some of you viewers, uh, if you been friends with Chuck for a while on Facebook or if you're know, not or, you should. or if you stalk Chuck and you may have stalk went back and if you're and, not you uh, should looked at his uh, you, you'd see a video that he has where he comes out on his porch and he's listening to some mystery mystery noise that's around a lumber porch that everybody can hear and it's a pretty hilarious video um, I know Steph always laughs at it every time we see it just for fun um, but anyway, I, we were looking through the news here, and we, there's also a mystery noise in Oregon. That's the same Whoa. thing. I've the, been hearing about this the thing, same man. Same noise happens out there, and it's baffling people in the neighborhood. I guess it's in uh, Forest Grove, Oregon, is where it's at, and they and they said that they're you know they're looking for like uh, brakes squealing or train tracks nearby. They think it, you know this this squealing weird sound up in the air, and it and it reminds me, and it sounds like I saw a video. It sounds just like 
You're crazy noisy. Listen, I'll tell radio. you something else. There's there's something else that 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 happens that, and this is like a world phenomenon where you hear people hear like what some people call them harps. They hear this sound. Yeah. They just go outside and they this hear this Jim. sound in He's the air, and it's absolutely bizarre. It's bizarre, yeah. and now they're hearing it in Portland, but they don't. They have no idea yeah, why. They said it sounds like the sound of a train, like metal screeching the tracks or something like that. But um, <laughs> that sounds like a high speed I guess train. The, the officials around there don't know what it is. They've they've asked a lot of the officials, and they they have listen. No let me clue. tell you something. If they knew what it was, if they even knew what it was, would they tell you? No, 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 no. There's a lot of stuff they don't tell us. Just like, just like, yeah, and that's where we're going to get into that JFK stuff. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things like that that would just, you know, we could get in. And one of the things that we started about when uh, we did this podcast is to talk about things that were bizarre and, and to kind of, you know, make us talk amongst ourselves along with um, maybe make you think about things. And one of the weird things is, is like, just like with the sun and the stars and how all that stuff works, they've always told us that we revolve around the sun. Now, I'm not being crazy about anything. No, you're I'm not. Just, but I'm just, I'm just asking the question. If you can visualize the sun being the pivotal point and the earth rotating around that sun, then, as we all believe, that's as, how we're, as, taught, that's how to we're taught. Then, 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 why is it that that we don't see constantly new stars? Why, are, if we're looking out this way in springtime, why are, and why are we seeing the same shit when we're looking at and we're in the fall and we're looking at the same stuff in the sky? Yeah, because technically we are on the. Uh, if the Earth revolves around the sun, now we're on. You know, say in the spring we're on this side, in the fall we're on this side. Yeah, you're looking. But at, yeah, if you right. but if you look up at the night sky, you see the same stars. How can that in be? the fall as you do in the spring? Now, how can that be? It's bizarre like that. It's yeah. bizarre like that. just like these mystery noises. Are yeah, they, that's is, weird. is it like just like or just and that's and that, and a lot of sci-fi stuff has been based upon weirdo things, yeah. just like this, like like the Portland noises or yeah. whatever. It's like. Where does it come from? We if they even knew, would they tell you? Yeah. We don't, we don't if, the, if an asteroid was coming down to Earth, just like what happened a couple of weeks ago, and they blasted the daggone, uh, it hit in the, in the Atlantic Ocean somewhere, yeah, it's, they it's didn't even know what, what would happen. What would happen if there was a if there was an asteroid that was going to come down and wipe out the planet? Well, hit, they wouldn't we'll tell just, you because people would panic. Absolutely, they mm -hmm. wouldn't. Tell so you. we wouldn't know until that thing hit, and we were all dead. And then the way they're doing things now Except with passing for up. Obama, he yeah, would not be dead. <laughs> He'd be flying around in his helicopter. Hey, listen, once again, we want to thank you for listening to Rogan Radio. We're going to come back with a great discussion on JFK and maybe tell you the uh, quote of the podcast so you can win quote something. Week. Quote of the week. Quote of the week. And then maybe even a mystery word. So keep listening. Mm. You're listening to Rogan Radio. <laughs> on Rogan Radio and Thank my you for goodness paying. gracious yeah I'll tell you what one thing that I couldn't uh, two things I've been disappointed in one is the fact that your love life your love life one is the fact that we had this great co conversation about how Richard Simmons is being held uh, by his maid or something I guess the guy who went in the hiding something. held hostage is bizarre <laughs> in the second of, uh, second is we've been through this entire Maybe thing so far and Todd has not always. introduced us like he's tried to do every single podcast thank you for listening to Rogan Radio <laughs> so anyway <laughs> we're, we're moving on what we're going to do now tomorrow we got Jimmy Maybe his maid thing. wasn't losing any weight exactly sweat into Jimmy, the we, did, we did we did exactly right see perfect thanks Chuck for letting me have that Tea slice you of Rogan couple, Radio. You had a couple seconds, man. Asshole. Welcome to Rogan seconds. Radio. Anyway, yeah. as we do every single podcast, what we have is a quote of the week. And this quote of the week yes. is being read by Captain Tar Albach. Thank you very much. This quote of the week is from okay. phone number 5334. That Whoever five, you might three, be, I'd like three, to say four. thank you for thank saying you very the much. quote of the week, the Rogan Radio. The quote of the week is, if breaking a mirror gives you seven years of bad luck, then breaking a condom gives you 18. Ooh. Woo! Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. applause for that. Hold on. My goodness. Uh, Let me read the punch. Then breaking a condom gives you 18. <laughs> ah, there we Let's go. See. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> Five, three, three, four. And that, that right there is Broken why he doesn't get airplay. He didn't even have the applause. Ready? Come on. That is wild, though, and uh, bizarro. <laughs> anyway. One Thanks. thing that we started when we were when we were going to go with when we started this podcast, we were going to talk about things that weren't necessarily the norm. 
And sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we're just being dumbasses. That's fine, too. So anyway, so somehow in the last couple of weeks, one of the big controver- well, one of the big controversies since 19 19- November in 1963 has been the death of JFK. Yeah, November 22nd to be exact. And 1963. Somehow, Captain Earl has came into like a, 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 a what, what what were you watching or what were you, what made you even decide to even talk about JFK? Well, I was just sitting around the house doing my thing. Mm-hmm. You know, do doing my thing. Mm. Give me some music, Jimmy. Go ahead. Doing his thing. I'm just doing my thing. And I said, you know what? I got I need some show prep. I got to find it. Because, you know, I think Rogan Radio, in the in this conception, we kind of said, you know what? Let's talk about some conspiracies every now and then. Right. It would be nice to throw something like that in there. Right. I know we got a big buddy of ours, uh, Shipe. He's real big into them conspiracies. I said, let's find out. What can I learn about JFK? Right, because that's, that's like one of the biggest conspiracies as, of, as conspiracies of, all of all time. It really of is. All time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, and I learned a little bit about JFK. Well, tell us. Phil there's said. some weird. Listen, there's some weird stuff. No, listen, listen. There's there's weird, there's, 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 there's things. Always weird things. That 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 yeah, I know. But listen, the, the cover up on this JFK stuff. There's just too many inconsistencies when it comes to what he said and what the truth is. We're talking about an assassination of a U.S. president in yeah. Dallas, Texas. In and, Dallas, Texas. And something, mm-hmm. something that, when I watch that, even with the uh, Magruder, Magruder films or whatever that, the guy that actually filmed that thing, mm-hmm. the, whatever his name is, yeah, I, I can't watch it. Because the first time I see that bullet going in, but then when I see that the impact from the headshot, it's disturbing to me. I just, I just can't. It's just one of those things where I just cannot. I cannot because it's so. And listen, it's real. And they, you know sh- I mean? and they have yeah. no problem showing that headshot. Oh, on TV. Yeah. And you know what? And we're just going to kind of skim over. Yeah, go ahead. Because we don't go have ahead. an hour show. Right. But listen, let's talk about the headshot for a minute. Okay. Okay. So according to you know history, the headshot was the third shot. Okay, from okay. Lee Harvey Oswald. If we believe that Lee Harvey Oswald took the third shot. So let's just talk about the third shot, for instance. Do you know what kind of rifle that he used? It was a, it was an Army surplus was it rifle. Two, two, three or something? No, it was actually a 6.5 millimeter. And, I, and I'm going to butcher the name up. I swear to God, I am a... a um, it's some cheap ass like Cuban rifle. Or yeah, something, isn't it? yeah. It's, I'm it's not some... even. Uh, yeah, because I'll uh, care. I can't even. I I wrote it down, but I don't even know how to say. It's it. not like it's a Springfield or something like. No, like it's only a, no. like a fine tuned sniper machine. No, and I think you and I talked. You and I talking. We were talking about open sights. It actually had a scope on it. Oh, did it have a scope? It had a scope. This he pulled off three rounds according to what they bolt action it, too. Bolt right? action three rounds five point six seconds from a <clears throat> from the sixth floor in the. Um, the book depository in right Dallas. there in, in Dallas. Right. Okay. So they're saying first shot hit him on a moving target too. On a, on moving, a moving target. <laughs> he was he was in his motorcade. He was traveling about eleven miles an hour. Now that now listen, he was a marine. A lot of people don't know all of Oswald was away. But, but he he didn't make it out of boot camp though, did he? I don't. I didn't. I don't know about that. Okay. <laughs> but you know anybody that te- if the Marine Corps teaches you how to shoot, you know how to shoot. Right. right? Okay. Well, because you know I know all about that. That's all right. Okay. He got off three rounds, five point six seconds. That's and fast. We'll talk about that in a second. But listen, first round, boom, right in the back of the neck, right below the collar, hit right to the right of his, um, right to the right of the spine, went through his spine, came out right below his nipple. What's a fun word? I love the word nipple. Right through the back seat. Um, um, who there was, yeah, a, there was a, the, the, the governor or, or, yeah, or governor was it was a governor or senator yeah. of Texas or something like that? Yeah. Was it sitting in the front seat? Yeah. yeah. What the heck was his name? So the first one that's that's the first one that I see where you can see like he's holding himself, and then no, you yeah you absolutely can. He yeah he's holding he's like, himself. Right. Uh, Conley, Senator Conley and senator, his wife okay. were sitting in the front seat. It went through, came out through the seat. Hit Senator Conley right below the shoulder blade. Okay, came out. It it fractured about four or five inches of his f- the fifth rib on the right side through his wrist. You're talking about the senator now. Yeah, through so, his wrist into his left leg. Damn. First shot. Now what, what they're the saying. What the hell was the senator do? Did he have his feet on the dash or something? <laughs> no, it's just the the angle, the trajectory. Oh, okay. About sixteen came degrees. Like, yeah, it came down like that. Oh, Boom. I see. <laughs> through, bang, in the back, out the front, through the chest, in the leg. Boom. A straight shot. Straight shot. He uh, he was using. Now keep in mind, he was using um, full metal jacket. Yeah. Just you know what I mean. Just a right. ball around. Right. 
So, you know, and Jimmy will, will you'll contest to this. I mean, those ball a ball round or a full metal jacket that's not designed to go in and you know how like yeah, it, it just come it, out and explode. It's designed yeah, to go straight through everything. Designed to go straight through, and that's exactly what it did. Through yeah. his wrist, boom, into his leg. Okay. The second shot they're saying missed. I don't know where that went. Uh there's eyewitnesses that saying they saw a uh, the an course. impact on the ground. That's okay. what they saw. The third shot, boom, right in the head, right side. You see the video. Everybody's seen the video. Oh, it's traumatic. Boom. Well, because we're talking about the headshot. During the autopsy, they did an autopsy, and they said that the impact of the hole in the base of that, in the back of the skull, was about six millimeters. Okay. Now, what did I tell you? Did I tell you what the it was? It was supposed to be six point five millimeters. <laughs> now, how can a round that goes through the back of his head at six point five millimeters create oh, a God. hole? The six smaller. millimeters that's smaller than the actual round can Uh-oh. never happen can never happen <laughs> it can no it's impossible <laughs> it's what, did, abso- what, was it i mean i wonder with this was it at the same angle like say that where where it hit in the skull like say where it the second or third hit did it hit at the same angle See, as that's the a, other that's third, another third? thing if he would have shot with that same round at the same angle that he was shooting from that book depository it would have entered, and it would have taken, it would have came, so basically this one was basically hit on the right side and ejected from the right side of his head. If the round came from the book suppository, depository, it would have hit in and came out on the left Had side. Had to have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's weird enough, If even if you take out of the fact yeah, that it was only a six millimeter hole. Listen, that that's, that's you can't detest, that, that's physics. Okay, mm-hmm. now listen, uh, uh, because we can talk about this all day. The round that hit him in the head, the, the first round that hit him in the back that went through um, Senator Conley and into his leg was, like I told you, Jimmy, a six uh, full metal jacket. Yeah. The second round hit that hit him. Now, you tell me what would have happened. Well, if I would have well, shot well, you in the back no, of the no, head. Second, the second round missed. The third round. Or, or third <laughs> round, excuse me. What would uh, have happened if I would have hit you if with that same sh- round? Like shooting at the same trajectory, you know, that comes through the back out here, it would have came back. Through the head and probably would have come straight out your eye or someplace. Yeah. Without creating a hole. Exactly. It would have came. It would have went in clean hole. and it would have came out clean because those rounds are designed to go in and just like come did, out. Just like it did the first time. This one didn't. They measured the they measured the hole, the intra hole. It was six by fifteen millimeters. That thing went in six millimeters and went in fifteen millimeters and it just fragmented. It yeah. was it just went like it's that. Black. Just whoosh, like this. That's <laughs> not how those full metal jacks are designed to right. shoot. They're designed to go in. And come out. Now, you tell me how J- uh, Oswald, who was the same rifle, three rounds, so you can assume that he shot the same ammunition from all three rounds. Right. How did the third round not just go straight through? You know what I mean? It didn't. Hmm. So well, there's listen. there's one weird thing right there. Listen. Let me oh, there's a whole treasure trove of weird this. things. Let me ask you this. Oswald was just some guy mm-hmm. yeah. pissed off. Mm-hmm. He wasn't like a trained sniper mm-hmm. or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So after he – now, listen, we're, we're going into psychology of stuff. Now, first of all, three rounds in six seconds. It's five-something, but five three on a seconds. bold action With a rifle, bold action, that's hard on a, enough. On a moving yeah. target, so he had to aim and, and he had to and adjust. Getting, yeah, every time you shoot, getting back to that. And you're in some place you don't know, <laughs> exactly. and you're shooting at the president of the United States. Right. Yeah. So you're going Absolutely. to now listen. So you're going to be nervous. Listen. I would think. Yeah. A year. A year after 1964, CBS did a. Um, they did a little experiment. They took a. Uh, they took 11 marksmen. Okay. And um, oh, I wish. What was that name of that guy's name? Donahue. Oh. He was one of the. Um, he was one of the marksmen. Donahue has a lot to do. He actually wrote a book called. Um, I can't remember the name of the book. Now listen to this. They took 11 marksmen. They they set up a a, a, a scenario. Mm-hmm. They took a uh, like a Baker target, you know that you would shoot like a military FBI uses the Baker target like the mm-hmm. silhouette yeah, from the yeah. up down. They put it on a rail. They tr- down now they uh, the motorcade was going about eleven miles an hour. So what they did is they took the CBS took these eleven marksmen. They put them in a tower, which would have been the exact same height as the mm-hmm. sixth floor on the depository, and they. They put these. They put three rounds in the same rifle. And these guys are professionals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're marksmen. The same. The state, they. They. I don't know if it was exactly the same rifle, but the same rifle, not the same rifle. Right. Right. Oh, three I'm rounds, sure. and they ran. They ran all of them through this course. They put that Baker target on that track, 
11 miles an hour. And the only one that could put all three rounds in that Baker target was Donahue. And listen, it took he didn't get he didn't do that till the third try. And he's like well known professional. Yeah, absolutely. Right. He's well known. He's a marksman, and um, I mean he's been doing this his whole life. He had his own gun store. He was a gunsmith. He did. I mean, this is Donahue was one of these guys who they would call in, like courts would call in for uh, if and, they needed and, an and, eye. And here's the thing. Here's the thing different about this guy. He wasn't worried about getting caught. Yeah. So you can imagine. Yeah. You, and those paper targets are a lot easier to see and shoot than, say, half of a president. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and, like, and like Chuck mentioned earlier, the, I mean, these guys that were shooting at this, but it was a very controlled environment. They were, mm -hmm. they, if you take this, if you just take you know the nerves going. out of it, you know, you're. You yeah. Know. The nerves alone. But if, if, if you're up there and you don't know where you're at mm -hmm. and you're trying to, you got this gun and with the bolt action and you're getting ready to kill or assassinate somebody. Yeah. And you're just some dipshit. Yeah. It's not a controlled, it's not a controlled thing. No. You know, you know. Oswald knew he's, and then somehow he just walked out of that place, and no one thought shit about it. And yeah. then he went to go watch a movie instead yeah. of getting in the car yeah. and driving away yeah. somewhere. That's where he got busted. Was in a it was in a theater. Which you know what? Did we do the uh, comparison between um, Lincoln? Listen, and let me Oswald? tell you what. We should. We really should. Let me tell you what. Here's what we're going to do next week. We're going to talk about this for a full segment. That and Lincoln. We're going to yeah. get it together so we can talk about. Yeah, it. I got a lot more. Shit. I have. Listen, I got a there's lot more to right say there. about JFK that you guys will go like this. No shit. Because it, it, it does it does not make sense. No, and even yeah. if you take just what I told you, just the, that one little, just the headshot thing out of it, I mean, there's so much more that just does not add up. How one guy, though, the thing that amazes me is how you can have a normal guy, Marine or not, in that situation with a bolt-action rifle he was not trained in, by the way. Right, right. So, you know, even if, if, if you know, you could be trained on a on whatever weapon you might have, an, an M14 or an M16 or whatever, but you just pick up another one. I mean, Chris Kyle would have a hell of a time kind of adjusting it because he doesn't know the barrel, he doesn't know the windage, he, does, he doesn't know how that thing's going to yeah. act, and he could just go up there and say, boom, I'm going to do this from so yeah, long, that's, so far away. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like these are snipers that actually can calculate what they need to do, not just some dude that goes, oh, I got a I got a rifle that's you know sighted in pretty good. I'm just gonna you yeah, know? yeah, and not to mention you know that target's traveling perfect on a rail. You're in a car that could be you know approximate eleven, could be speeding up, slowing down, moving a little bit. I and, mean everything. And, and, and the <laughs> nerves of trying to figure out. I mean, how are you going to do that? Like like a sniper rifle. If you're a sniper, like say Chris Kyle, yeah. I'm sure that guy had the same rifle for so long that he knew exactly what that that what that round, unless it was a malfunction or a, or an imperfection in mm -hmm. that round, was going to do. But for the most part, he knew exactly. Just like driving your car, you yeah. know exactly how that car is going to handle. Yeah. yeah. If he you know he could be the best shot in the world at 1500 meters. If he picks up somebody else's rifle that say Jimmy yeah. was great at 1500 meters, Chris Kyle is not going to be great at 1500 meters yeah. with that particular rifle because he never shot. Yeah. Yeah, every every gun's different. I mean, I noticed. Listen, some we're going to do this next week. Thing. We're going to do this next week. Listen, we really, really need to. This is going to be good shit. Yeah, because they yeah. will make it, it. Just think about the, you know, what we talked about tonight, because that's just because then there's just because so then much we could get into if it wasn't just him, who was it? Oh, why? Man. Yeah, this, we'll this see. Could, that's ooh, another yeah. thing. I, that's another thing I can tell you all about that too. But that's what I mean. This guy that comes up and uh, Jack Ruby. Yeah. What? What? The, the day before he was like in, in uh, Louisiana or something like that. Why would he travel all the way to Texas just to kill somebody? Yeah, that's who killed all of like Jack a bar, Ruby, a, a bartender or a bouncer or something like that. Mm -hmm. Why would he travel all the way up there? Yeah. Well, listen. Anyhow, there's a net, there's a Netflix original. It's called JFK: uh, The Smoking Gun. Check that out. I'm gonna have to watch that. Yeah, it's really good. Netflix has got a few of them, but it, this one in particular, uh, The Smoking Gun JFK. It's oh, we're going really talk about good. This next Check week. it out, listen, man. We'll, we'll talk gonna, about this next week. Absolutely, next week. Absolutely, yeah. this is gonna yeah. be some good shit. It's gonna be this. This could be like one of those. This could this could turn the podcast yeah. into a complete. You could never talk. You stop yeah. talking about this. Listen, actually. things just don't add hey, up. This Chuck. sounds like we're getting to the end of this, but I did want to brief on this real quick. Was uh, Division. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We played yeah, it. Yeah. Me and Todd played it. Good uh, stuff, good I stuff. I don't think Chuck turned his PS4 on yet. No, Chuck doesn't own um, the game yet. Mm -mm, so, mm -mm. Uh, but I like it. Me, me, uh, Ducko, and uh, uh, Todd been playing it, and I think it's great. It's got a lot of replay value. I'd like to get Elizabeth on here next week. <laughs> Elizabeth will talk about that. We'll do that, too. And the, now, so the game is, how is it compared to it's the beta? third person. The it's, just, it's big. It's just big. Dude. Yeah. I mean, the beta, um, the beta gave you a lot, uh, but this gives you boy. Biggest a selling game Ubisoft's ever had, ever. Really? Uh, I didn't beats know that. Assassin's Creed. Um, uh, what was the one with? Uh, I keep going back to Chaos Theory. Splinter was it Splinter Cell? 
don't Chaos know. Splinter Cell was there like uh, mm-hmm. with the uh, the spy games. Oh yeah, yeah Splinter yeah, Cell. Yeah, yeah. They beat all of that stuff, and so the game is great. It's yeah. fantastic. Then listen, we're going to go ahead. We, it's been out for a week. You guys, you've, you've had a chance to play it. We're going to give you another week. We'll get Elizabeth on here because I know she's about it. We're going to talk about JFK. Yep. Man, we're going to rock this out next week. Next week, JFK Part 2. And before we leave ah. this podcast, we want to hear from Jimmy Wisniewski. Hmm? We want to hear the mystery word. Oh. Now, this mystery word, what will what, 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 what win you? What you have to do is when you listen to this mystery <laughs> word... Is go ahead and send us a text at six eight one two 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 R O G N. That's six eight one two 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 seven six four six. Or you can send us a message on the Facebook page with whatever it is, and you're going to win a, a nice, really a nice uh, Rogan decal sticker. Yeah, to put in your car. So Jimmy Wisniewski. Okay, the mystery word in, is, for today is. Uh, I'm going to do it in relation to what we just were talking ooh, about. This okay. is going to be good. The yeah. mystery word is. Grassy Knoll. Grassy wow. Knoll, the mystery words. Grassy uh. Knoll. Well, this is... <laughs> hey, whatever. Yeah, yeah, grassy, grassy Knoll. knoll. Very listen, fitting. Man. Thank you, Chuck. The grassy Thank Knoll. You, Jim. That's the mystery word. And listening grassy Knoll. On, uh, on behalf of everybody that's uh, been listening, on, uh, we really want to thank David Daughtery and the band for giving tickets away to Mike Bird and to George Reinhardt. And tonight's big winner, Charlie Sauer. He, yeah. he gets yeah, to go up and, and he gets to go up here and uh, have dinner and everything else. Uh, Deb Kelly won uh, a shirt. Uh, let's see who else. Mike Lutz. No, uh, listen, I think Tara. Um, what oh, was Tara's last Kara. name? Kara. Kara. Kara won a sticker. Yeah, uh, Holt? yeah, 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 yeah. Holt. Yeah, I think that was her last name. So I got. I can't we remember. We need to start <laughs> this. This, this <laughs> is our age. Marble. See, that's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hit, See, hit more takes pool. me to remember for you too. Yeah, I can well, we spit her address out if you want. For yeah. <laughs> um, thanks for everybody that's listening. We really do appreciate that. Uh, we're going to have uh, just a, a fantastic summer once again. We're debating on uh, how the podcast is going to go. Is uh, um, we're going to have a new thing. By the way, if you're listening to the podcast, real quick, um, you're going to see two things pop up on this particular episode. We're going to have two podcast one of them is going to be like always this will be uh, episode 21 whatever the title might be you'll see that you're also going to see from now on from this moment forward uh an episode 21 called the social hour and it'll just be episode 21 the social hour episode 22 the social hour this is going to be what we broadcast on um the facebook which is what we call the social hour before we actually start we're recording what you you've just listened to right so we're going to actually record everything so you don't uh you absolutely don't miss anything out because we realize there's a lot of people around the world that don't listen to the podcast that don't have facebook and don't even want to get on facebook so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and start doing that episode you'll see tomorrow episode 21 the social hour, which is what we did before we started this, and then episode 21, whatever the hell we decide to call this, probably JFK and St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. JFK and St. Patrick's Day, that's episode 21 of Murder the, Radio. That's probably going yeah. to be Hey, so, real quick thoughts and prayers go out to uh, Prince George County, Maryland. They just they had a, a officer that was uh, shot and killed, ambushed right there near uh, today. Actually, yeah. it's Black all Lives Matter. It's all Black over Facebook, Matter. yeah. Black Lives Matter, baby. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, that's just it's getting mm. out of control now. Yeah. It's just getting out of control. How <laughs> come nobody brings attention? How come you don't hear all over the news media and everyone talking about the police officers who were killed? That, Jimmy, didn't you, they just have one last week? I don't know. If yeah, it was, it was that woman. Remember? The, the, was that the, the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The rookie first day. That was that well, was on domestic dispute. This one looks like it was an active shooter that actually came into the uh, right near the station. Man, just so passed. it was like an assassination. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah. I don't that's know why. You, why do you don't hear about that? That pisses me off. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, you know, that's another show. We'll do that. You know, what can you say without getting without starting the whole thing over again? Because <clears throat> it's bullshit. It's it's the whole breakdown of society, and and you could see. Oh wow, well, we'll just do that on the, on a different episode. But uh, thoughts and prayers to them, also to the Matheny family. Um, Paul passed away, and the Matheny family, big uh, uh, big family around here. We didn't know we like Kim and uh, and Joe and all that, and they just you know. We want to uh, have send our thoughts and prayers and condolences to the Matheny pa- family of uh, Lumberport, Shenson, and surrounding areas for that. And that's uh, that's a pretty sad deal, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that being said, I hate to end on a bad note, on a sad note like that. Um, but 
Until next week, on behalf of uh, Jimmy Wazeski, on uh, do, did I even slur your word right there? I think so. <laughs> it's, it's the it's, champagne it's beer. Yeah, I think it's I think it's not, not because it's Irish. It's because it's uh, too On behalf of too Jimmy Mick was what Mick Wazeski. <laughs> Miller, uh, hi, how, hi. Can you, how can you say <laughs> Mick Wisneski? Can we shorten your last name <laughs> to about one Wiz. syllable? Wiz. Jimmy Wiz. <laughs> on behalf Jimmy of Wiz. Jimmy McWiz. On behalf Mc- of. Uh, nah, just Jimmy Wiz. <laughs> on behalf Mc of uh, Todd McBeck. What? No, that's my wife. Come on. And uh, yours truly, Charles. Uh, until next week, you've been listening to Rogan Radio. 